Okay, so we always think about supermassive black holes, right? These like oh. ultimate powerhouses, these like rulers of the biggest galaxies in the universe. Right, yeah. Like a VIP club for only the biggest cosmic giants. But get this, there's uh, some pretty wild new research that's suggesting that these, these gravitational heavyweights might actually be hanging out in much smaller galaxies. Wow. Yeah, and I'm talking even in like one of our close galactic neighbors, the Large Magellanic Cloud or the LMC. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I mean, if this is true, it kind of shakes up like a lot of our ideas about, you know, how galaxies evolve and how they form. It definitely, definitely challenges some of our long held assumptions. I mean, the traditional view has always been that these supermassive black holes, they're kind of like intrinsically linked to the formation and the growth of these massive galaxies. Right. Yeah. So this potential discovery, especially coming from some pretty solid research from the Harvard Center for Astrophysics, it paints like a whole new picture, maybe a more common origin story for these supermassive black holes than we previously thought. Right, yeah. So, okay, let's unpack this, right? Let's deep dive into this potential black hole in the LMC. We gotta understand the science behind it. Why are people so excited about it? What could it mean for how we understand how all these galaxies, big and small, actually work? You know, what are the implications for their formation? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this could be a total game changer in how we understand you know, galaxies developing and changing over time. It really could. I think one of the, the biggest takeaways here is that we can't just assume that supermassive black holes are exclusively a big galaxy thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Like this discovery hints that their origin story might be a lot more common, a lot more diverse across the universe. Okay, so the first clue in this whole mystery involves these like unbelievably fast stars. And we're talking about stars that are zipping through space. Mm -hmm. like over a thousand kilometers per second. Wow. I know, right? I mean, it's mind boggling because a typical star in our Milky Way, you know, it's cruising along, it's like 100 kilometers per second. So I, these things are really, really out of the ordinary. They are, they are truly exceptional. And they're so fascinating because their speed tells us they must have at some point encountered an incredibly powerful gravitational event. Right. Like something really, really gave them a kick. And so the first of these these cosmic sprinters, they were spotted back in 2005. And since then, astronomers have cataloged nearly a thousand of them. Wow. Yeah, so we're starting to get a better picture of just how common they might actually be. And for a while, the explanation everyone went with for how these stars got their crazy steed was this thing called the uh, the Hills mechanism, right? Yes, the Hills mechanism. It's a classic. It's a classic model. Yeah. Can you give us like a quick, a quick rundown, like not a textbook version of what it is? Okay. So imagine, imagine a pair of stars, right? They're orbiting each other. They're mm. kind of like a cosmic dance partners. Right. And they get a little too close to a supermassive black hole. Uh oh. Uh oh, is right. So the black hole's gravity, it's so intense that it can disrupt this pair, this stellar partnership. Oh, wow. And so what happens is it captures one of the stars into its own orbit, while the other one, it gets flung out like at an insane speed. Like a cosmic slingshot. Exactly like a slingshot. Wow. Yeah. And for many years, the assumption was that pretty much all the hypervelocity stars that we've observed, they originated from the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, where our own supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, lives. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So. A supermassive black hole basically acts like a cosmic cannon, just firing off stars at crazy speeds. But, but here's where things get really, really interesting. Okay, tell me. There's this new evidence suggesting that some of these hypervelocity stars might have actually been ejected from the LMC. Oh, wow. I know, right? Big twist. Because, I mean, that implies there's something seriously massive lurking in the LMC, something powerful enough to, you know, kick these stars out at those speeds. Yeah, exactly. If we're finding hypervelocity stars in our Milky Way, but their paths are like breadcrumbs leading back to the LMC, then that points to a really strong gravitational source within that dwarf galaxy. And given those crazy speeds, a supermassive black hole, that becomes the most likely suspect. Right, because nothing else could really do that. Right. So basically tracing the paths of these these super speedy stars is absolutely crucial, right? <laughs> it's like trying to follow the contrails of a jet back to where it took off from. Exactly, exactly. It's like a cosmic detective work. Yeah, I love that. We're trying to map these invisible gravitational forces, and if we see a bunch of these hyperfast stars, and they're all pointing back to the LMC, even though they're now in the Milky Way, that's a pretty strong indication that something big is going on over there. Right, yeah. Yeah. And that's where this research from the Harvard Center for Astrophysics comes in. 
This team, led by Guan Jesse Han, they've been using this amazing data from the European Space Agency's Gaia mission. Oh yeah, Gaia, that's the one that's like mapping the positions and movements of like billions of stars in our galaxy. Exactly, right? billions. It's incredible the level of precision we're getting with Gaia. So what did they find? Well, they focused on a set of 21 hypervelocity stars that initially everyone thought, okay, these must have come from Sagittarius A, the black hole at the center of our Milky Way. But when they really dug into the Gaia data and they traced these stars' movements backwards in time... They discovered that they weren't heading away from Sagittarius A at all, right? No, they weren't. Their paths were pointing in the opposite direction towards the LMC. I mean, that's a pretty big deal, right? Huge. It's like flipping the script on the whole story. Yeah. So, if I'm getting this right, we're not just talking about, like, a new data point. We're potentially talking about, like rewriting part of the story of how galaxies work, right? Like, the whole textbook needs an update. Exactly. The fact that these trajectories are converging on the LMC, it really strengthens the argument that something very powerful, gravitationally speaking, happened in that galaxy. And that something, well, it most likely launched these stars out at those incredible speeds. Right. So, I mean, the odds of having, like, multiple, you know, random events, like all in the same area that could produce this kind of focused, you know, these stars being kicked out like that, the odds are incredibly low. Incredibly low. So based on, you know, how fast these stars were going, the researchers were able to estimate like how massive this potential LMC black hole is. And they're saying it's somewhere between like 250,000 and 1 million times the mass of our sun. That's the big one. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. So just to give me a comparison, is that smaller? bigger or like in the same ballpark as the supermassive black hole at the center of our own Milky Way. It's definitely smaller than Sagittarius A, which clocks in at about 4 million solar masses. Okay. But it's still big. It's firmly in the supermassive black hole category. And what's really remarkable is finding something this massive in a dwarf galaxy like the LMC. Right. That's the part that's so crazy. We're talking about a galaxy that's way smaller than the Milky Way, potentially housing a black hole that's hundreds of thousands, maybe even a million times the mass of our sun. It's amazing. And that really challenges our thinking because for a long time, we thought, you know, supermassive black holes, those are for the big galaxies. But now it seems like maybe their formation isn't so tightly linked to the size of the galaxy. Exactly. It hints that supermassive black hole formation could be more universal happening in ways or maybe in environments that we hadn't really considered before. It's like maybe many other dwarf galaxies out there are also hiding these massive objects. It's like we're only just scratching the surface of how much variety there is out there in the universe mm. when it comes to black holes. Definitely. It's so exciting. Okay, but hold on. Every time you have, you know, a claim this big, this like groundbreaking, you have to consider other possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. Could these super fast stars have gotten their speed from something else entirely? Like what about a really, really powerful supernova explosion? That's a great point. And researchers have definitely looked into those alternative explanations. But the patterns they're seeing in the star speeds and also the direction they're traveling, those patterns really support the idea that they got their kick from interacting with the supermassive black hole. You know that slingshot effect we were talking about earlier? Right, yeah. Supernovae, while incredibly powerful, they tend to leave behind a different kind of pattern, you know, in terms of the star's velocities, and they probably wouldn't create that same focused outward movement, that specific direction that we see pointing back to the LMC. So the gravitational slingshot effect of a massive black hole, that just fits the data much better. Okay, that makes sense. So if this discovery holds up, and it sounds like the evidence is pretty strong, what are the implications for how we understand galaxies and how they evolve? Like, this has to change the way we think about these things, right? Absolutely, it's a big deal. For a long time, our models of how galaxies form and change over time, they pretty much assumed that supermassive black holes were mostly a feature of big galaxies. Yeah. Like, they helped regulate how stars were born and they influenced the overall structure of these massive systems. But if it turns out that dwarf galaxies like the LMC can also host these giant black holes. Then it suggests that they could play a much bigger, a more universal role mm -hmm. in galaxy form formation and evolution. Right, across all different sizes. It might mean that the initial seeds of these black holes, they actually form earlier in the universe in a much wider range of environments than we currently understand. Wow. You know, it's funny because we've seen hints of this in other research too, right? Like those ultra compact dwarf galaxies, M60, UCD1 comes to mind. Mm -hmm. It seems like they have these supermassive black holes that make up a huge part of their total mass, which always seemed a bit strange to me. 
Yeah, that's another piece of the puzzle that's been really intriguing for astronomers. One leading theory is that these ultra-compact dwarf galaxies, they might be the leftover cores of what used to be much larger galaxies. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe they went through these huge tidal interactions with other galaxies and they lost most of their outer stars, but they held on to that central supermassive black hole. So it aligns with this idea that supermassive black holes might be a lot more common even in smaller galaxies than we used to think. Right, yeah. And then there's also the growing evidence for these intermediate mass black holes yeah. in dwarf galaxies, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's been found using instruments like DSI, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yes, and it feels like we're starting to fill in the gaps, right? Between the smaller stellar mass black holes, the kind that form from collapsing stars, and those giant supermassive ones. So it's pointing to a more continuous spectrum of black hole sizes out there. Right, yeah. Like, the universe is full of surprises. Always. Another weird detail I saw was that some black holes in dwarf galaxies, they seem to be, like, off-center. Which is kind of counterintuitive, right? You'd think they'd be right in the middle, like the gravitational heart of the galaxy. Yeah, it's a bit of a head-scratcher. But it actually makes sense if you think about it. Like, if two small towns merge together, the original center of one town, it might not be the exact center of the combined area anymore. Oh, right, yeah, I get it. So, with galaxies, this off-center black hole, it suggests that they probably went through some pretty intense gravitational interactions in their past, like maybe they merged with other smaller galaxies, and those collisions, they could have knocked the central black hole off kilter, so it's not perfectly at the center anymore. Right, wow. So, thinking ahead, if the LMC does have a supermassive black hole, what could that mean for when it eventually slams into our own Milky Way? Oh, good question. Which is supposed to happen in a few billion years, right? Yeah. Right. That's going to be one heck of a cosmic show, right? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a wild ride. I mean, just imagine you'd have streams of stars being ripped out of both galaxies. Oh, wow. You'd have probably a huge burst of new star formation because all that gas is getting compressed and colliding. And eventually, like way, way down the line, wouldn't the two black holes like spiral towards each other and merge? Yeah, over extremely long timescales. And wouldn't that release like an incredible amount of energy. Oh, absolutely. We're talking a colossal release of gravitational waves. Wow. Those ripples in space-time that Einstein predicted. That's amazing. <sighs> okay, so knowing whether or not the LMC has a supermassive black hole, that's really important for figuring out how this whole merger is going to go down, right? It's crucial because it adds another layer of complexity. It's not just two galaxies merging. Right. It's two massive gravitational centers interacting. And that could lead to all sorts of chaotic effects on the stars in both galaxies, maybe even more stars getting flung out into intergalactic space. Wow. And it would definitely change how the combined galaxy evolves in the long run. Right, okay. So this potential discovery is really making us think about these massive galactic interactions mm -hmm. in a whole new way. And it highlights how important black holes are in shaping the universe as we know it. It definitely does. And it really emphasizes the need to keep exploring, keep asking questions. You know, we have these amazing new instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope. Oh, yeah, the JWST. You can see through all the dust and gas that usually obscures things. Right. And we have this new generation of radio telescopes, super powerful. They can probe really close to the event horizon of black holes. Wow. And with those tools, we'll be able to find and confirm more supermassive black holes in dwarf galaxies, and that will help us understand how common they really are. Right, yeah. So there's still so much more to discover. Oh, absolutely. All right, so just to do a quick recap, the key takeaway here is that our understanding of supermassive black holes, and it might be about to get a major update. Oh. We have this really compelling evidence suggesting there's one in the LMC, our little galactic neighbor. It's incredible. And this evidence comes from the paths of those hypervelocity stars that seem to have been you know, shot out of the LMC. Mm. So that challenges this long-held idea that supermassive black holes only hang out in the biggest, most massive galaxies. It's really paradigm-shifting stuff. This finding makes you realize just how diverse the black hole population in the universe might be. Right, and on that note, here's a final thought for everyone listening. If we can find a potential supermassive black hole in a seemingly ordinary dwarf galaxy like the LMC, mm -hmm. what other surprises are out there waiting to be discovered? Right, and all those countless dwarf galaxies scattered throughout the universe. Like, what other things that we think we know about space, what might we need to rethink? As our instruments get more powerful and our perspectives broaden, who knows what we'll find? Yeah. So keep those cosmic questions coming. Until next time.